Good morning. Good morning. Today is a special day in the life of the church. Today is Pentecost Sunday. And I see some of y'all did get the memo to wear red. Today is the day when we remember the birthday of the church, when we remember the Holy Spirit coming upon the people and, and, and they were able to understand the languages of their own. It was a powerful day. And those powerful days still occur because the presence of the Holy Spirit is around us, among us, and within us. Amen? Amen. Um, we're so glad that you joined with us today in person, but we are also glad that those of you who joined with us online have uh, joined with us because we have a we have a large portion of the um, congregation and across the country that are joining us online, and we're so grateful that uh, we can be the body of Christ, not limited by walls. So uh, we're glad that everyone is here today. I want to uh, draw your attention to just one announcement. Uh, virtual Vacation Bible School is underway as far as registration goes and just a few weeks left. Um, kickoff is June the 7th and, and, and we've had a really great surge of interest in um, Virtual Vacation Bible School and it's such a great thing to, um, to see. And um, we've opened up and extended the registration through the 30th, May 30th. Um, but right now, because um, the cutoff was earlier, um, we won't ha have kits. But the kits um, are easy with stuff around your house, and so you'll have those list of items that you need. But remember, you can still do this. So still register. We need you to still register your children, even if they don't get a kit, because we want to make sure they get into their proper Zoom group. Um, so please continue to um, register for Vacation Bible School. And even if you don't come for Vacation Bible School virtually, there's going to be an in-person event on Friday, Friday, June the 11th, from 4 until 6 p.m. in the Christian Life Center. And it's going to be a fun occasion, um, a lot of STEM activity for you uh, teachers out there. So uh, please remember to come and sign in and, and register for Virtual Vacation Bible School. As we continue in that spirit of worship and in spirit of praising our God together, I invite you to join with me in the call to worship. We are the Easter people. We celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. We are also called to be a people of the Pentecost. We are called to boldly share the good news of God's love. Open your hearts, friends, to God's great power and love. We open our hearts to hear God's word for us and to proclaim Jesus Christ as our Savior. Amen. Please join me and stand as you're able as we sing together, Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
Please join together in our Pentecost affirmation. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives and renews life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to love God and neighbor, to accept ourselves as we are, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ the church. The same spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through scripture, engages us through the proclaimed word, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of people's long silence, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, Empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth. Praying, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Today, today is a very important day in the life of our church, and not just our church, but the church as a whole. Today is known as Pentecost. Acts 2 tells us that the very first Pentecost was a day where the disciples and a lot of other people were gathered. And while they were gathered together, the Holy Spirit came rushing in like a big gust of wind. And there were what they describe as tongues or flames of fire. And the Holy Spirit gave them this ability to speak all kinds of different languages. This is awesome because this allowed the disciples and the other people there to share what they had heard, what they had seen with Jesus. And, and in that moment, experiencing the Holy Spirit, they could share it with others, with other people who may have never had this opportunity before. And because of these awesome things, Sometimes Pentecost is known as the birthday of the church, the day that the, the church as a body was born. How awesome is that? And who doesn't love a birthday? So how do we celebrate a birthday? We celebrate with our friends and our family. So friends and family, I'm glad you're here to celebrate. And we often sing a song. And today our children's choir has prepared a special song and they are going to lead us in worship.
helpful. I enjoyed that very much, and I hope you did as well. We also celebrate today those who have significantly achieved milestones in their lives through graduations, through completions of programs of study and preparation, and so we want to honor them as we see them as their photographs are projected on the screens and as we uh, give thanks for their accomplishments. First is uh, Karina Walton Roberts. We're grateful uh, for her achievements. She graduated from Notre Dame. And Vanessa Walton Roberts graduated uh, from Grayson High School and plans to go on to school. Let's see, who is this? Austin Seaver, do I know him? Where are you, Austin? <laughs> there, <laughs> Austin's graduating. Also, and attending Young Harris College, staying with the Methodist theme all the way. Congratulations, Austin. And then uh, Aiden Williams, Aiden Williams from Kennesaw Mountain High School is going to Georgia Southern. And then um, Dawson Edward Britt is graduating from the University of Georgia. And then Cam Cameron has gotten a master's degree in social work from the University of Kansas. Jerry and Bonnie were telling me about that a little while ago. And then uh, Natalie Clausen uh, graduated from the University of Georgia and is moving to Nashville. I hope not to be a country singer because that's a tough business, but good luck if that's it. Jared Thomas Henderson is graduating from the University of Georgia with a Bachelor of Science and is Cheryl's grandson. A Steve Icara graduating from Mercer University and is a pharmacist. And these are our graduates that we know about. There may be others, but if so, we don't know about them yet. It's not too late to let us know, but these are the ones that we celebrate and give thanks for today. Will you join me as we pray for them? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for these persons who have reached significant milestones in their education. We thank you that as they have graduated from high school and college, university, that they now take their places among all those others who have graduated and continue on in this life. We ask you to bless them, fill them with your goodness. If they're continuing an education in university or college, then help them to know their way. If they've graduated from university and are moving on into their professional experience, then we ask you to bless them and open doors for them that they can find their way in this world. Lord, we thank you for their parents and families and for all who have supported and encouraged. We know this is not an easy road, and yet we know that each one represents significant sacrifice and encouragement from families. So thank you for them all. Bless all of them and their families and guide them as they continue to grow in your love and in your grace. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And in that continuing um, spirit of prayer, we join together as a congregation as well. Uh, we have some joys to celebrate. Um, happy 50th anniversary to Colby and um, Janie Bryant um, on May the 28th. And happy 50th anniversary to Bill and Jesse Murphy on May the 15th. Um, in that spirit of prayer, of course, we always lift up those who are in need of prayer that we know about. But um, as we know, this list is not complete. Because each one of us comes to God with, with hardships on our heart, struggles that we are enduring, and and we are so lucky and we are so blessed that we serve a loving and grace-filled God who cares, who cares about the concerns of our heart, who, uh, who walks alongside of us when we're struggling, and who loves us just the same. So please lift up in prayer. We do not have this person listed on our screen because it just came in this morning. But please lift up Don Sharon, 
Also lift up Bill Murphy and Vanessa Sandage. Please lift up those who are under hospice care and cancer treatments. And in our military service, those teachers who are finishing up a school year, those students who either are graduating or are, are going to go back again for another year, let's lift up all of these in our prayers as we pray together. Dear loving and merciful, grace-filled God, we come to you with, with gratitude. We are so grateful to serve and worship you. Please open our hearts to your Holy Spirit. Enable us to receive the winds of your breath as we come to you this day of Pentecost. Please open our hearts to one another as we are called to love one another and enable the diversity of our various tongues to be like a beautiful chorus for us all to join together and sing. We come this morning celebrating our graduates. Dear God, please guide their way and direct their paths. Please enable their journeys to bring honor to your name and integrity in their walk. Dear God, be with the parents, the parents who are entering into a new role in their lives. Dear God, give us comfort, give us peace. In celebration of Pentecost Sunday, dear God, we offer our Lord's Prayer in various tongues as we pray. Pai nosso que está nos céus, santificado seja o teu nome, venha o teu reino, seja feita a tua vontade, assim na terra como nos céus. Nosso tägliche Brot gib uns heute und vergib uns unsere Schuld, wie auch wir vergeben unseren Schuldigern. E não nos meta em tentação, mas livra-nos do mal. E o duvaio é siastvo, e sila, e slava, por veki. Amém. 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 Our uh, first scripture lesson is uh, from Acts 2, verses 1 through 12. When the day of Pentecost had come and they were all together in one place, suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they ask, Are not all of those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pomphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya, 
belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In their own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we continue in the spirit of worship, as we remember that throughout the worship service, each element of this service is for God and for God's glory alone. We want to uh, remember that the gifts that we give to the church are, are done so in celebration of the God that we worship and also in hopes and prayers that the mission and ministry of the church continues on. Here we just read about the beginning of the church. We want the church to continue to strive and reach others for Jesus Christ for generations upon generations upon generations. So we give thanks and praise for the gifts that you give. As always, you can give online or by texting or by mailing a check to the church. Or if you're in person, you can do so in the offering plates as you depart. But we are just want to say that we are thankful and grateful. And to that we offer up this prayer. Dear loving and graceful God, we are so grateful for those who are able to give with their dollars and cents, with their times, their talents, their prayers, and their service. Dear God, we are so grateful that we get to serve you and your church. Help us always to be mindful and good stewards of each gift that we receive, that we covet each prayer, we value each person in their presence, and we offer all this in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, in your Holy Spirit, in your Holy Church. Amen.
according to John in the 16th chapter, beginning at the fourth verse. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asked me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because they do not believe in me. About righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason... I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A little while, and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while, you will see me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Please be seated. Well, I'm sort of in a quandary today. I don't know exactly what to do. I got Ed over here on the front row, and I got Bob over here on the front row, and I don't know which one is I should reach out to first because I thought I'd never get to see the day, Ed, when I'd have both of you sitting on the front row. But here we are. This is an amazing time, and I am glad that each of you is here, and I'm glad to welcome those of you who are watching us also on our uh, live feed, and we hope that each of you will be blessed by this time together. Will you join me as we pray? Gracious and loving God, we pray that by the inspiration and power of your Holy Spirit, you will help us to come alive, both in all that we do and in the words which we will hear. Through Christ our Savior, we pray. Amen. You know, there's a big spring festival in Atlanta called the Dogwood Festival. My daughter loves to go to the Dogwood Festival. She loves the fun, the, all of the celebration, and everything that takes place while she's there. I suspect that something like the Dogwood Festival was taking place in Jerusalem at the time of Pentecost. It was a spring festival. It was an agricultural festival. There was much frivolity and happiness, and almost everybody in the city was happy. But there were about 120 people, these followers of Jesus, that were sequestered away in an upper room, and they were scared. They were confused. They didn't know exactly what was going on or what to make of all that was going on. The agricultural festival known as the Feast of Weeks took place every year, 50 days after the Jewish Passover. We think of it as Pentecost because it happened 50 days after Passover. So many people were in Jerusalem and so many people were celebrating and excited. These 120 people who were followers of Jesus, who were somewhat confused, suddenly began to change. Because the Lord of all life, the God of all creation, did something unusual. He did a new thing. He poured out the Holy Spirit on everyone who was there and especially on these 120 believers. Because on that day, as the Holy Spirit descended upon them, they changed. They were no longer those 
scared disciples that were hiding away, and instead they became the empowered disciples, empowered by the Holy Spirit to be a part of the change that was taking place in the world for the cause of Jesus Christ. Well, friends, the Holy Spirit is still available to us today and wants to empower us to continue this change that is taking place and needs to take place in the world. If we're going to do that, if we're going to be a part of that change that is inevitable, then we have to understand what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to live from the Holy Spirit and out of the Holy Spirit. We have to me understand what it means for the Holy Spirit to live in us and cause us to do things differently. This morning in the next few minutes, I want to share just a few things that I believe the Holy Spirit has in mind for us on this Pentecost Sunday. The first thing that I believe it means is that if we live in the Holy Spirit, we live in community. Now, Acts teaches that the day of Pentecost when it came found everyone come that were members of this little band of disciples of Jesus all together in one place. They were a little community right there, scared and powerless, but everything was about to change. I'm convinced that the missing link in our society today is community. We don't understand or live out of community nearly enough. We, in the United States particularly, are rugged individualists. That's who we are. That's our heritage. But life is changing. We can still be ruggedly individual, but we also have to understand that we are a part of a community that is growing throughout the world. Completing each other in community is so much more important than competing with one another. Martin Luther King Jr. said once, we must learn to live together as brothers and sisters or we will die apart feeling foolish. The United Methodist Church used to proclaim the world is our parish. And that was true. But it isn't true any longer. Today, the world is in our parish. If we look around us all, even in, this, even in this sanctuary today, we will see people who are from all different kinds of backgrounds and places, birthplaces, speaking different languages with different accents. The world, in fact, is in our parish. And we need to celebrate that fact because God has been good to help us to find community together right here in this place. You and I live in a world community. We have to learn to relate to each other, to respect each other, and to embrace each other, even throughout our differences. We have to learn to relate to other people in other parts of the world because what we do influences them and what they do influences us. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. And unlike some of our brothers and sisters in some parts of the world today, we have to learn how to get along together. We have to learn how to live together in the same place and not shoot at each other or fire rockets at one another, but learn that peace is what God desires for us all. Acts is one of our great books, and it teaches us that when the day of Pentecost came, all the community were gathered together 
in community. That's a part of what Pentecost means. And here's another part of something that Pentecost means, I think. It also stands for communication. Acts teaches each one heard them speaking in their own language. Now what happened at Pentecost was not glossolalia. It was not speaking in unknown tongues, but it was speaking in tongues that others could understand, in languages that others could understand and know what was going on. What happened at Pentecost is a gift. It is the gift of understanding that each of us can have. It happened that all of those people from all of those different places, all of those different groups and ethnicities and languages and birthplaces had the gift of understanding in his or her own language. They could communicate with each other. Years ago when I lived in Germany, I was traveling with a group and we, were, we went to one part of Germany where there was nobody that could speak English. There was one man, though, however, who came up to me and he said, I, ich spreche zehn Sprachen. I speak ten languages. I said, well, that's amazing. I said to him in German, what languages are they? He said, nur do, only German, nur Deutsch. But everything with my hands and my feet. Well, on that day, there may have been some people speaking with their hands and their feet, but they understood. They had the gift of understanding from the Holy Spirit. That's one of the gifts that we each can have. We can communicate with each other. We can learn to listen to one another. So much of the time when we communicate, even though we're quiet, we're thinking what we're going to say next. Sometimes the best thing we can do is to listen, to hear, and to understand. That makes it so much easier for us to be understood. On the day of Pentecost, the gift of understanding was granted. It seems to me that part of the reason that people outside of the church don't understand those of us who are inside of the church is that because sometimes those of us on the inside speak in a language that others don't get. We speak in a church ease kind of language because it's what we know and we can. But the problem is we're called to witness and communicate the love of Jesus Christ with others outside of the church. Even when we speak the same language sometimes, there are some people who don't understand us. I'll give you a case in point. This past Thursday, I was blessed to be a part of a luncheon with the Romeos. Romeos, all capitals, stands for retired old men eating out. I'm soon to be one of them. We had a wonderful time and a wonderful meal, but when we left, as I was leaving the restaurant, one of the restaurant hostesses who was in the front of the restaurant stopped me for a second and said, Sir, if you don't mind, tell me, what, what kind of group is that y'all have back there? I tried to explain to her what Romeo's was about. It was clear she had no idea what I was talking about. I tried to help her understand that we are from this church and that here in this church we try to give away fire insurance. She didn't get that either. Perhaps it was a bad joke. But the fact of the matter is she works in a restaurant less than two miles from this church and she had no idea that we're here. I tried to tell her a little bit about Easter and about eternal life. She held up her hand and stopped me. She said, you got to be understanding. I don't know what Easter is. I have never in my entire life been on the inside of a church. Two miles or less away, 
and she had never been on the inside of a church. Well, I invited her to come today. She said, I'd love to come someday, but I have to work on Sundays. So I told her about our young adult group that meets online on Monday nights and invited her to come and join in with that group. I hope she will. But I can guarantee you she won't stay if what she hears is inside her language. If what she hears is language that she doesn't understand. You see, the Holy Spirit wants us to communicate with each other, to understand each other so that we can share the love of God with everyone we meet. The Holy Spirit tries to help us to communicate so that we can be understood, but so that we can also understand the needs of those around us. What this all really means is that this is the way that God shows God's amazing love for every one of us. Pentecost means God loves you and God loves me and God loves all people in the world. God wants to be with us always and in every way. Jesus' birth, Jesus' ministry, Jesus' crucifixion, his resurrection, this Pentecost experience where the Holy Spirit exploded, all of it is sent to us to show us God's love for us, to show us that God loves us all, everywhere, in the whole world. In fact, God loves us so much that everything that has taken place has taken place to invite us to love God in return. Pentecost, nor any of these other events in the life of Jesus or in the life of faith in the Old Testament or the New, have happened so that we will be forced into loving God, so that we can be forced into a relationship with God. Not at all. Not in any way. All of them have taken place to show us the deep and amazing love that God has for us all. I know that sometimes, especially us preachers, are tempted on Pentecost Sunday to use theological words, to show our education and try to speak in words that are big and academic sounding and complex. But the truth of the matter is God's love is what's really important at Pentecost or any other time of the year. What Pentecost really wants us to understand more than anything else is that God has sent the Holy Spirit into this world so that we can know that we are never, ever alone, so that everything that God does for us is to let us know about God's love for us and God's invitation to love him in return. If you want to know what Pentecost means, I think it means simply this. God loves you. God loves you. God wants you to know that you matter, that your life makes a difference in this world. God wants you to know that you are never, ever alone. The Holy Spirit is here to draw us into community, to teach us to communicate so that we can share the love of God, the salvation of Jesus Christ with every person, everywhere. And above all, to know that we are loved as God's family and God's children. That's how much God loves us. All of these things that took place are to show us how the incredible love of God is ours for one and each of all of us. Sisters and brothers, I think that's what Pentecost means. 
in its simplest way. It means that God loves us so much that everything that took place finally had culmination in the Holy Spirit so that we would never be alone and would always be close to God's love. Now, if that's not something to celebrate, if that's not something to be excited about, then Lord help me. I should have retired months ago because I believe that this is something that can help us all to live, to share, to witness the incredible love of God to others, to be understood, and so that others can understand just how much God loves them. May it be so. May it be so today. May it be so tomorrow. May it be so always that the Holy Spirit shows us how much God loves us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for loving us in so, so many ways. You have given us the church. You have given us Jesus Christ. You have given us the Holy Spirit. You have given us an incredible world to show us your love. Help us, O oh God, to love you, to love one another, and to live as though we believe it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Michelle's going to lead us now in sweet, sweet spirit. I invite you to stand as we sing together. I want you to know how happy I am that you are here with us in the sanctuary today and how happy I am that you have joined us uh, with our live stream at home. It's a blessing to worship together, to be together, and to celebrate God's blessing of the Holy Spirit. We are a community, and we can continue to communicate with others the love of God even with our hands and our feet. Even if our language doesn't permit us to share, we can still help others to know God's love. And so I send you from this place and from this time of worship to do just that, to trust yourself to the Holy Spirit of God, to share God's loving presence with all that you meet and with all that God gives us with whom to share. So go in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit now and always. Amen. Amen.